fascinating future. Standing next to me is Mr. Rossman, Vice President, Research and Basic Development here at Rittal. Mr. Rossman, what's the way forward? It's certainly a multifaceted journey and we have a whole array of goals. A particular focus is green IT, but here too there are many different aspects to take into account. The use of renewable raw materials in industrial enclosures is of course one technology issue, but there's also the question of energy consumption by IT data centers, for example, an area where we also see the use of fuel cells in future. Another aspect is the use of wireless technologies to identify malfunctions in machines at an early stage and thereby reduce energy consumption and isolate the malfunction or take the use of mobile devices to display energy consumption. When will these innovative concepts be available on the market? We are working to development schedules of one to three years in our research projects, rapid solutions in other words, but we are also focusing on technology issues such as the use of renewable raw materials. This is a more long-term goal that Rittel will certainly be working on for the next few years. We're now in the fascinating future area. This takes up a large portion of the Rittal stand here at the Hanover Fair, just as it did at Seabit too, and features the bionic shock-absorbing pallet. I know what a shock-absorbing pallet is, but what does bionic mean? The word bionic was invented from a combination of biology and electronic and means that we at Rittal try to find solutions from nature to particular technical problems, enabling us to overcome tricky challenges. In what areas have you copied from nature? In this shock-absorbing pallet project, we adopted characteristics from the hedgehog and the porcupine, among others. Hedgehogs and porcupines have special spines that are not just used to protect them from predators, that is, for defense, but also as shock-absorbing features to cushion them against serious falls and prevent them from injuring themselves. And how did you incorporate this principle into the shock-absorbing pallet? You can see these shock-absorbing modules that are constructed like small spines. They're installed between the base and the cover plate of the pallet. And another completely different question, how long has Rittel been making shock-absorbing pallets? Rittel doesn't make shock-absorbing pallets itself and is not going to do so, but we retain an overview of the whole process and delivery chain from Rittel to the customer. To ensure the goods arrive safely with the customer, shock-absorbing pallets are required for particular enclosures, and we have developed a concept for this. This pallet, optimized using principles from nature, is designed to be higher quality and cost-efficient. How realistic is it then that this project, because it still is just a project at the moment, will reach a stage of market readiness and be used in practice? The project has good prospects for successful market implementation. The feedback from the Hanover Fair has affirmed our confidence in this project still further and leads us to believe that we will be able to launch a successful product under the market at the fair in the next one to two years. Mr. Zuchanek uh, has also caught our imagination with a view of the future using modular fuel cell systems. Why modular? The modular design allows me to expand this type of fuel cell system to suit my particular needs. I can connect several of these fuel cell stacks in parallel. The benefit for the customer lies simply in the flexibility of being able to boost the output. Mr. Hein, the wireless service concept also appears here under the Fascinating Future banner. What can we expect from this? Our plan is to incorporate our climate control systems into the wireless concept. When multiple cooling units are distributed around a factory building, for example, and the customer doesn't want to lay cables, he can receive all the information from the cooling units by wireless means. Can you show us how that works? I can simulate an error now on this cooling unit here. You can see immediately that this also appears in the rewatch software, that is, in the management interface. This information can then also be passed directly to the Rittle servicing department. The service engineer knows straight away what is wrong with the unit, which component is defective, and can make his way to the customer to repair the unit. Thank you very much. Mr. Holikhaus, we're now standing at the bio-rack, which also represents a glimpse into the future. What's the story here exactly? Here at the bio-rack, the focus is on new materials. In other words, we are looking for substances that can be made from renewable raw materials and that we can use as basis materials for the enclosure. Do you know yet what raw materials you're going to carry on using in your research? Yes, wood-based raw materials and ones that can be processed as a mix with conventional plastics. We can't wait for the first enclosure to be served up.
Yes, it may not be too long in coming. The fascinating future concept is also focusing more and more on the subject of the environment, as we can see here with a new CO2 cooling unit from Rital. The CO2 cooling unit certainly comes under this category, particularly since an EU directive came into effect last year prohibiting the current cooling agent from being used in cars from 2011. We're expecting a revision shortly, that is, in two years, also prohibiting us from using the cooling agent that we currently use in stationary cooling units. What are a few years? We know Ritol is a trendsetter. How long do you need to get a unit like this to the market ready stage? We started four years ago, made the initial test prototypes, and now have a unit that is almost ready for series production. This means we will be in a position to start delivering units to our customers shortly. What were the biggest challenges during these four years? On the one hand, a much higher pressure than in today's refrigerant circuits. We're talking 130 bar instead of 28 bar. And the changed thermodynamic flow. Instead of a condenser, we now have a gas cooler. And how do you control this pressure? You control this high pressure in the first instance by changing the diameter of the pipes, making them smaller, and secondly by increasing the thickness of the walls. This complies with all the legal requirements and gives the customer the required level of safety. We wish you every success with the unit. Mr. Korza, your future lies in active structural acoustic control. Can you explain to us briefly what this involves? Yes, it involves the use of active measures for noise reduction. I have a noise source that I wish to reduce, and I do this with a counter noise source in phase opposition. This cancels out the noise. Can I use this principle for other things too? Yes, you can reduce vibrations of all kinds. For example, you can reduce the bearing vibrations of refrigerating compressors. We have already succeeded in implementing this on server enclosures, as you can see here, as well as on windows and facade elements. Mr. Debus, what kind of fascinating future can you offer us? Here in the fascinating future area, we are showcasing new technologies that offer customer benefits for energy-efficient data centers in the service sector. A major field is the subject of augmented reality, that is, the linking of virtual information with real images from the data center. Can you help me to picture that? Think of it like this. In principle, we have a consumption data capture system running in the background at every data center. We are now offering the possibility of displaying this information using real camera images via ultra-mobile PCs. The benefit of this is that service employees can receive this information as real images displayed at the front of the rack. 